Hello everybody, Gamer Dad here, and this is going to be my first official series on this channel. Uh, many of you may have come from my main channel, uh, which is called History Guy Gaming, where I pr primarily play uh, historical strategy games, but I have another love, and that's the love of soccer, or as they call it in most of the world, football. Uh, so I thought I would give a go at one of my favorite games to play, which is Football Manager 2020. Now, I love watching other people play this game, and there are some fantastic channels out there for playing this game, but I don't find many from an American perspective. Most of them are uh, people in the UK, and they're fantastic, and I love to listen to your uh, accents. It's just awesome, and uh, I wanted to give this a go from an American perspective and just maybe have something unique. And so what I've decided to do is start a series that'll probably take quite a while, maybe even a couple of years, and I want to take a team from my family's hometown in England and bring them all the way down from the 11th division of the English football pyramid and take them all the way up to the Premier League, if that's possible. I'm not going to switch teams. I'm not going to take other jobs. I'm just going to try to bring Tipton Town all the way from the bottom to the very top of English football. So why Tipton Town, you may ask? Well, I'm glad to answer that question. Uh, my nearest relatives that came from England actually lived in Tipton, right on Wednesbury Oak Road, which is uh, the road, I believe, that Tipton Town Town's facility is on. That was where they lived uh, back in the, uh, up until the 1860s when they came to America after going to Glasgow, Scotland for a little while. And so I thought Tipton was the perfect place for me to choose. Uh, it's a nice, small facility. It's obscure. It's, you know, really small, and that's exactly the kind of thing I'm after. Now, I don't believe this is actually their logo. I may go ahead and update that at some point, uh, but I thought it would be fun to do this and see if I can bring them. Now, I should say, uh, I am a huge West Bromwich Albion fan. Uh, West Brom is right there nearby. Uh, actually, that family that came here uh, from... Uh, England to the States, uh, my immigrant ancestor actually had a nephew who played forward for Aston Villa uh, in the early 1900s. His name was Sammy Whitaker. Uh, his uncle was my ancestor who came to America. His name was Richard Whitaker. And uh, so, you know, I've got a little bit, some, some ties to West Midlands football there. Uh, but Tipton Town is my choice. And just looking at, uh, obviously, their history, uh, they are amateur status. They're an obscure reputation. They are called town. They love uh, owner loves the club. Tipton Sports Academy is where we play. Two thousand uh, the capacity, two hundred and eight seated. Poor facilities. No data analysis facilities. So that's what we're working with, and that's who we're going to try to bring all the way to the top. So I've decided to go with um, a Continental Pro license, which seems like a lot, but. Uh, that's what I'm going to go with. It gives me some extra points as far as the coaching attributes. So that gives me a little bit of an edge. And I've decided to choose motivator, but I'm not going to really adjust this a whole lot beyond that. Um, I, I feel like maybe I do want to uh, customize this a little bit. Uh, I might go with uh, a little bit higher on youngster knowledge since I'm probably going to be dealing with some young players as we go along. Uh, but other than that, I'm not going to do a whole lot. We'll try to make up for what I don't have uh, with the proper coaches moving forward. So we're going to go ahead and start playing, and we're going to see what we can do. Now, here's the thing. As I uh, think ahead to playing as Tipton Town, since we're an amateur league, I am going to be signing a ton of players uh, because what's going to happen with amateur league players is as soon as I get a player that's good, somebody who can actually pay them is going to scoop them up. So I have two goals right now, right off the bat. Number one is sign as many players as possible that I think can help my team, knowing that I'm going to lose a lot of them and just try to keep some good players in the lineup. The second thing is make money. And uh, I'll talk through how I'm going to do that as we go, but I want to start stockpiling some money. So I've got some finances, which should give me an edge over other teams like me who don't have money. So here we go. Tipton Town have today confirmed the appointment of Gamer Dad as the new head coach. Eyebrows have been raised in 
in the world of soccer at the appointment of the 41-year-old who has recently spent time away from club soccer, and he is sure to face plenty of questions when he faces the media for the first time at Tipton Sports Academy. Dad has put pen to paper on a month-to-month deal worth nothing because it's we're amateur. So, uh, and that's my coaching experience in real life. I've been coaching soccer for about six years. Uh, my my sons both play. My daughter played uh, until a few years ago. My son play, plays club sp- uh, soccer now, but I mostly just coach uh, our volunteer rec league. So that's kind of the experience I have. So let's go ahead and take a look at the team that we have. Obviously, very little reputation. They're predicting us to finish second, but that really means very little right now. Our current facility was built in 1970. We were founded in 1948. And... This is the team we have. Means absolutely nothing at the moment. We're going to take a look at what the ex- expectations are from our ownership. Uh, they want us to finish in the top half of the West Midlands League Division One. I'll accept that, but you know what? Honestly, these first couple of years, I expect promotion every single year. Uh, I really want to keep this moving as best I can, so I'm really hoping to get a promotion those first several years, at least till I get up to maybe like the sixth or seventh division uh, kind of layer in, in the trying in the uh, pyramid of soccer. Uh, so I'm not going to do a press conference. I'm not going to do any of this. I'm just basically going to dive in. Okay, so the very first thing I'm going to do, as I mentioned, I want to start making money for the team. A really easy way to do that, especially as a low-level team, uh, is to schedule, actually host, some cup events. That brings in some money. So I'm actually going to clear out some of these uh, events that I've currently got, these friendlies. uh, And instead, uh, well, you know, if if I've got a friendly against a, a decent team, I may go ahead and do those, but I want to clear out some of these friendlies and instead plan some cups on those weekends. Maybe we'll try to plan some friendlies in the middle of the week instead. All right, so here we go. We've cleared the schedule. Now we're going to go ahead. We're going to plan a cup. Uh, and you know, we could actually do it as early as Tuesday and Wednesday, but I want to get a little time to try and get some players together. Uh, so I think we'll actually bump it back to here. That gives me some time to start signing some decent players because I want to win the cup. Uh, so we're going to call the first one just what it is. We're going to call it the Tipton Cup. Uh, we'll come up with some more creative names as we go along. Uh, so we're going to choose some local teams for this. Uh, and it looks like here are some of the teams we've got available. Uh, and you can see the fee that we will pay, pay to the team for appearing in the friendly and then the income uh, that they will receive for that friendly. But we're going to you know, be selling tickets, so that's kind of what we're after here. Uh, we might try to get at least one large reputation team, although you see how much you got to pay for that. So maybe that's not the way to go here. I don't, I'm not really familiar with a lot of these smaller teams. Obviously, these are some Welsh teams. Maybe we'll bring in a Welsh team into this. Um, and then let's get one more nearby team. We'll bring in Hampton. So, uh, so there you have it. Those are going to be the three teams we're going to invite to our very first cup competition. That's going to get us some initial income and we'll schedule some more as we go along. And I'll also arrange some friendlies as we go. But now my main, I see, you can see I canceled all those. My main goal right now is to start looking for some players. So right now, um, I like to go with the 442 when I'm first starting out because honestly, it just seems the simplest uh, for me to kind of organize. And and at this point, uh, at this low level, really, it's just about getting the best players. So I'm going to start looking to fill those positions. It looks like based on this, I've got two pretty good players. Uh, we've got James Cooper here and then Luke and Spittle. Uh, so we're going to have to try and build a team around those guys. And like I said, I'm really just going to try to sign absolutely anybody because I know that uh, I'm going to lose a lot of these guys. If somebody goes in and gets a hat trick in a game, uh, I'm probably going to lose them right after that. So I I recognize that up front, that that's really what we're facing. So one of the things I'm going to do, since I don't have any scouting happening just yet, we just got into the first couple of days of the game, is I'm going to start looking at players who are kind of old and aren't getting signed by anybody that might just be looking for a place to play a little bit of soccer. So um, we're going to look at players like Steven here, uh, who's 38 years old, and it looks like he's got a history uh, where for the last uh, five, six years, he's been playing at Stappen Hill, Stapen Hill. Uh, And I apologize in advance to my friends in the UK. I love the UK. The UK is my favorite country next to my own. I have some very divided loyalties there. My dream is to visit there someday. 
I pride myself on trying to pronounce things right. Like I'm one of those few Americans that knows it's not Buckingham Palace. Uh, I know how to say Leicester. I know how to say Derby instead of Derby. But I know there's a lot I don't know. So I apologize in advance. And please, if you're in the UK, please feel free to correct me when I get those pronunciations wrong. So Stapen Hill, uh, it looks like that's where he played most of his career. He was at Nottingham Forest and at Leicester. I mean, those are uh, some pretty big teams. Leicester City's in the Premier League, one of the top teams in the Premier League right now. Um, so he had a decent career. Uh, so this might be a guy who's just looking for a place to play. So I'm just going to start gobbling up some of these guys, and we'll see who works and who doesn't. Uh, we'll start scouting uh, some of these players. i got to adjust some things. Um, but I'm going to go just start scouting a bunch of these older players that are out of contract and see who might be a good addition to the team. All right, so we've got ourselves an under-18s head coach now. Ash Unsworth is going to be the man for that. Obviously, it's an amateur uh, contract, so he's not going to get paid anything for it. I've also gone ahead and made my first uh, four contract offers for players that look like they're going to be massive upgrades uh, for my first team. So we're going to take a look and see when those get accepted. We should have them in position in time uh, for the Tipton Cup semifinal against Pelsall Villa, which is coming up here in six days. All right, well, I'd intended to show you that very first game, but I forgot I was going to do that until afterwards. It went really, really well for our very first match with our team that is far from a finished product you can see the stats here we won four to nothing uh over over Pelsall, uh but it doesn't mean it's gonna go so well in the championship we're gonna find out here in just a few minutes how that's gonna go i'm continuing to sign players this chris goggins gonna be one of our best for sure let's go ahead and take a look at him there's a 35 year old veteran striker who's got a current ability for this level of five stars so i'm excited about that I uh, was just looking at some of his inf information over here. He played with Northwich Victoria, uh, making a total of three league appearances. Appearances. Then he went to Witten Albion, uh, Warrington Town, and then Colwyn Bay. Uh, so we're feeling good about what he has to offer for this particular team. Now, granted, none of my players are in very good match shape right now. It's going to take some time to build up to that. And with an amateur team, you don't get to practice very often, so very little that can happen there. But it's time to go ahead and see if we can dive into this championship game. All right, so you remember when I first showed you the team that I had, we only had two players that were above one star rating. You can see how much I've already improved this team. You can see very little uh, in the way of match sharpness here. So we're going to struggle in that way, but I'm hoping that sheer talent will help overcome that. And I may even try to tweak some of these positions just to get people uh, doing what they do best wherever that's possible. Uh, you know, at this level, that's just kind of how things have to go. So, uh, all right, we'll go automatic there. All right, I feel like this is a team that can win this. We're going up against a Welsh team that actually won in penalty kicks in the first round. Uh, so hopefully we can win our own championship, the Tipton Town title here. So i got to tweak a few things with the settings, and we're going to dive into this one. All right, so we're just going to be seeing some of the key highlights here. We'll see how this goes. No, get it out of there, guys. No. Oh, not a good start as Connor Robert gets, Roberts gets on the board. And I'm going to butcher this, but Langdewin. Uh, my wife's family is actually from a town in Wales that is really crazy to pronounce. I think it's called Minidisluin. Uh, her, her last name is Watkins, very Welsh. Uh, so not a good start as they get one 10 minutes in. Hopefully we can turn things around here. We are an attacking uh, formation but uh, it looks like so far they're kind of dominating possession and i'm not feeling real great about that and spittle he's one of my best players i really don't know this team yet you know it's a brand new team and honestly even though i've added some good pieces i know that's going to change quickly here's a great chance for us yes all right got it back five minutes later excellent excellent of course, I get nervous anytime one of my players scores a goal at this level because you just know that some team that can go out there and pay him 300 bucks a week or 300 pounds a week uh, is going to snatch him up right away. So uh, Gagan gets on the board. That's one of my new signings. I'm pretty excited about that. Let's see if we can get this back. Get another one. Nice tackle. 
Beautiful. Pass it up. There you go. Now pass it back. Pass it back. Now. Who are you going to? There's nobody over there. Ah, uh, somebody must have knocked it out. This is what I do when I'm coaching. I'm constantly yelling things, even if I'm just talking to myself. Got a nice corner, though. Looks like nothing came of it. Oh, beautiful chance. Oh, Edmonds. You can see, though, in the stats, we're starting to dominate. We've got seven shots to their three, although two, only two were on target. We're dominating possession with 61%. So good things happening right now. We'll have to take a look at halftime. Looks like a lot of my people are uninterested. That's not ideal. They must have gotten some bad feedback from the coaches. Palmer's injured. We're going to have to deal with that. It's halftime now. So let's go ahead and make some... Make some adjustments. We'll go to the dressing room. Uh, I'm not handling pep talks. I'm allowing somebody else to handle that. So we got to go in, though, and we've got to uh, go ahead and make this substitution because I'm surprised it didn't interrupt me and let me know that. Barry Palmer is my youth guy. He's only 16 years old, but he's a, a star in the making. So we're going to go ahead and get another. Who do I have that I can? No, nah, that's not going to work. We might have to just throw somebody in there that maybe isn't ideal for that position. So we'll get Joel Pope in there. Let's see if that makes a difference. Need to get a couple more. I'm not feeling good about this right now. All right, let's get it upfield. There you go. Back to him. There you go. I got to remember these are amateur players. I shouldn't expect them to be playing... You know, like they're Liverpool or something. Oh, what a beautiful goal. That's two. I believe that's called a brace. We'll take that. Got plenty of time to get a hat trick. Very nice. Glad I signed that guy. I think he's the older player. I think he was 35. Take a look at that one one more time, man. Little, nice little pass up ahead. Wow. And he, he even kicked it right at the side the goalkeeper was on. I'm thrilled with that. Right back to it here. Oh, he was offside, I think. Oh, yeah, he was offside. Ah, beautiful play, too. He was. You can see right there, he's way offside. It wasn't even close. I can't even argue about that one. It's all right. Let's get one more. Get one more, and we'll probably change up to maybe a more balanced or even a defensive stance. That one's going out. No, oh, we're going to keep it in. Okay. Come on, let's get that hat trick. Of course, it's pretty much a death sentence if I let a player get a hat trick. He's going to be gone within a week, I bet. Oh, way offside again. Oh, good thing he didn't pass it to him. 13 shots, five on target. Only two goals to show for it, though. We need to get one more. I really don't need this to go to penalty kicks because I don't think we play overtime. Nathan Jackson with our first yellow card of the season. He's in bad shape. I probably should have made some subs, but I really want to see how this team plays. Here's a good chance right here. Spittle. Yes. Oh, he was offside. Uh, that's two goals disallowed for offside. That one was much, much closer. Oh, so brutal. We may be going to PKs for the cup. A little bit of time left here. There he is. That's our star of the game. Get a cross in there. Come on. Oh, Cooper. Yeah, he's not really in good shape at the moment. I probably should have subbed. I'm going to probably regret that, but I don't know my players well enough yet. What? He just kicked it right to the keeper. What was that supposed to be? And then the keeper picks it right back to me. Drop it. There you go. Go. Just take it. Just take it. No. This might be our last chance. There it is. Please don't. Ah. Oh, I wasn't sure he wasn't offside. Still got about a minute and a half. Well, about a minute to go now. Come on, guys. Last chance. Two goals disallowed. Ugh. Brutal. What are you doing, Carter? Nice throw. 
Nice throw. Come on, Edmonds, go. All oh, these amateurs. Ah, it's a free kick. Okay. Holding on to his shirt. Last chance. This could be the one. Maybe he doesn't get a hat trick, but he could get the assist that wins it. Get on side, boys. There you go. Put it in there. Put it in there. There it is. Oh, no, 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 no. Tripping. Oh, my gosh. Three goals disallowed in one game. All in the second half. Well, one was in the first half, I think. That's all right. We got to win. We got a win. We got a championship, and I'm pretty feeling pretty good about that. So let's take a look at the aftermath of what happens. Let's really hope that nobody scoops in and takes any of those players. So how many people were attending in that, I wonder? 58 people attended our cup championship. Yes. Tipton Town have won the Tipton Cup. So let's take a look and see what kind of money uh, we may have made for that. So let's look at our finances for a second. Profit and loss this month, 1500 uh, and that basically is our overall balance. I did spend some on a couple of those players for transfers. Um, so match day income, $715. Uh, hopefully we'll eventually get ourselves a sponsor, but uh, that's where we're at so far. I think we'll probably take this a little further and see what happens. I'm going to try to keep these episodes around 20 minutes or so. If there's something you want to see more of or less of, let me know. This is my first time doing this. I really don't know what people want to see. So let me know what aspects of the game you want me to show, and I will try to focus on those things more. So it looks like 442.com has a poll, which a few people voted on, and 82% believe that I should be signing Trevor Mendy. So let's take a look at Trevor. He's valued at $240. He is a goalkeeper from Tadley, and it may be that he is worth uh, following. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at him for just a second. We'll go ahead and offer him uh, a, a contract, and we'll see if he will accept it. Honestly, at this level, I don't even need to do a lot of due diligence as far as scouting goes, because what I can do is I can just sign these guys, and if they don't work out, they don't work out. So, um, oh yeah, you know what? He's due six thousand dollars in compensation in this deal with an additional ten thousand potential clauses yeah that's not going to happen so but really there's a lot of freedom at this level to just sign a bunch of players and whoever works out great whoever doesn't also great but i think we're also going to go ahead and create another tournament so let me go back into my schedule and do that now all right we've scheduled another event this time we're calling it the black country classic and we've got Kerry, Four Crosses, and more Green Academy. Kerry's a bigger reputation squad uh, than the others. At least that's what it said under what I chose. And so they expect more in return. Uh, so we're going to see what happens with that. But hopefully it's another way to not only see how my team can do against similar levels of competition, but also to hopefully bring in some much-needed revenue. So this is what we're going to start to see happen. Uh, you're going to start seeing this. This is going to be a regular part uh, of this first season for me where other teams jump in and start poaching my players because I don't have them under contract. They're not making any money. So really, uh, players with any potential whatsoever are going to view opportunities with me as just a, basically a tryout for bigger teams. And that's okay. And that's why I don't mind signing a bunch of players uh, because I know I'm going to have a lot of turnover. So as long as I can keep a decent team together, we'll be okay. So I'm going to wrap it up right there before we get into the Black Country Classic. I would love some feedback from you, as I mentioned before. Let me know what you want to see more of. Let me know what you see I should be doing better. I do not claim to be an expert on this game. I've got a lot of hours into it, but I've never tried anything like this. I've played with West Brom, and you know, I've played with some lower level teams, but never anything like this. So I really don't know what to expect and don't know exactly what I should be focused on. So if you have more familiarity with it than I do, this is your opportunity. Use that comment section below. Please like, please subscribe. I want to start building this channel. And you know, I'm not going to be making any money on it. You have to really get pretty big in order to do that. So I'm doing this for love, for passion that I have for this game, and hopefully you do as well. So thanks for watching, and we will see you again soon with episode two.